Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Carrying out a service on a Potterton Pro Max 24 Combi ERP. So I'm going to carry out some tests beforehand to see what I get and see what happens after I give it a good thorough service. All right, so I've got the temperature set to 45 Celsius. Gonna just do a test to see what the hot water is coming out at the nearest outlet. So let us turn the hot water on. So about 15 seconds in. So I'll just run it for a minute. See if I get any fluctuations. 30 seconds in. It's quite stable. 43. 40 seconds in. Let's have a look at what the board is doing. Okay, 44 Celsius, 43, stay stable. Okay, all right, let's start servicing the boiler. Okay, I've got the boiler in service mode. As you know, you two quick turns of the dial and it turns in service mode. And then you go to zero to 100%. I'm gonna do it on low fire first. And record a combustion reading. and then on high, and then we'll give it a clean, sort of flu temperature like. It's quite low. Just let it stabilize for a moment. Okay, gonna log this reading. Log 34. Okay, now we're gonna put it in high. Not for too long because we don't have any way for the heat to go. Okay, I'm happy with that, gonna log that. Okay. And we put it back to our 45 Celsius. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna just carry out a flu integrity test. So that's on the right hand side. The combustion test was on the left. So let's do that now. I'm just gonna turn on the hot water for that one. Just to make sure that I haven't got much CO at all on the O2 is acceptable. Okay, so boiler's running. Not picking up any CO. And oxygen looks acceptable. Okay. Integrity test done. Okay, underneath here, I'm going to isolate my flow and my return over here and my cold inlet 
because I'm going to carry out a few bits of draining down and so on and I'm going to clean up this magna clean as well. I oh, do remember that um, when you are isolating these isolation valves that sometimes they do let by and they can leak so be careful in doing that. Okay I've also isolated my gas supply. My gas supply is isolated and I've also shut off my electric and I'm going to pull out the fuse. Popping out the fuse just saves you from when you're working on the boiler at times if you're playing with any of the electrics and then you accidentally lean on it and turn the power on. That may have happened to some of you. Also check that it is a free amp fuse. Okay, I have isolated my magna clean. I don't know if you can see the isolation. Let's try and go around it. Can you see? Maybe on the right hand side you can just see over here. I've isolated and I'm about to go into my magna clean. When you're isolating it and um, closing the valves and opening up, just hold the body to support it. Okay, here's here's my magna clean. That's what it's picked up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a wash down and clean the magnet. Okay, now the magnet clean's been cleaned. Just to put it back together again, try to wear gloves when you're doing this. Okay, it's back together. Yeah, I'm gonna pop it back in. Okay, magnet clean's back on. Do remember to bleed it. Once you re-establish the connection over on the right, remember to vent from the top. Okay, I've got the case off, two screws out. Remember when you pull these down, to pull them down carefully, because I do remember once checking a boiler, once or twice, where I've had to pull this case down, and in doing so, somebody hadn't created any slack on the wires when they installed it, and it just obviously went bang. So be careful when you are pulling the case down or if when you're installing them make sure there's some slack on the wires okay i'm just draining down the boiler what's left inside there so i'm just using this little drain point over here going, going into a bucket oh that's a lot of pressure get that a bit slower there we go that's a bit better Okay, that's draining down. What's inside there? Okay, let's have a look. Yep, it's draining it down. Okay, apologies for any background noise. I'm in a domestic dwelling. Okay, still draining. Okay, whilst I'm waiting for that to drain, I'm gonna go inside the condensate trap and clean that out as well, over here. Okay, so here's the condensate trap. See how dirty it is. All right, it might need a little rinse and replenishing of the water. Okay, so that's been given a rinse through and the water has been replenished and the washer has been put back in place. Okay, the condensate trap is back in, as you can see over there, tightened up and the trap, the water inside the trap is there. So that's good. Now I'm going to take out this plate heat exchanger. Okay, so I have just um, undone, you know, the typical screw on the left and the screw on the right and just eased it off so that it will drain. <laughs> draining also inside here still and um, also from the water side a bit of water was coming out from there whilst I'm waiting for that to drain the plate heat exchanger I'm gonna open up my chamber okay I'm inside here make sure that you check your seal is good here's the seal the seal looks good check for any signs of leaking inside any corrosion. 
it's strained down here but I'm going to also check my expansion vessel in a moment okay I've got my plate to plate heat exchanger out and I'm going to give it a rinse through with a solution first I'm going to rinse it through with some hot water and then I'm going to just use a um, distilled vinegar um, and mixture of water solution inside to just leave it for a while whilst I'm servicing the rest of the boiler okay so here I am just rinsing the unit out the plate heat exchanger like a little tap nothing too excessive okay now I'm going to put some distilled vinegar with some water inside you can use other more aggressive um, things solutions yeah I'm gonna leave this in a while yeah okay Okay, so I've got my plate heat exchanger filled up with distilled vinegar and a mixture of water. Gonna let that soak for a while whilst I do some other bits on the boiler. So here we go, we've got our shredder valve there ready. I'm gonna attach my gauge. I just realized how much of a bad design this is. There's not much space for my gauge to go on and to flick the uh, top up so I'm going to have to take out the whole expansion vessel okay this expansion vessel is supposed to be charged to what it looks like is one bar here one bar it says max pressure here three bar test pressure 4.3 but I see one bar here in the center at the moment it's telling me that it does have hardly any charge so not much room for expansion and contraction I recommend if you are removing it like I had to don't take out the back one just slacken it off a bit so that you can just slide the expansion vessel out it's getting there it's halfway okay we're there now okay Banching vessels back in, washers back.